I think it cannot be debated, the fact that yesterday was a victory for South Africa and was a victory for our constitution. To me, as a South African citizen, I was proud to, uh, to, to be in a country where the judiciary remains independent and that the judiciary could be able to deliver a judgment of the nature that it did yesterday, certainly against a senior politician in the name of the president. And so it's a significant judgment for all of us as a country and a victory for the Constitution. I think further on from that is the fact that for those who are concerned about the state of democracy in South Africa, I think need to recognize the fact that what took place yesterday is a reminder that democracy only thrives if there are checks and balances and that power cannot be abused. Parliament cannot say that they weren't warned about this. At the commencement of the ad hoc committee process, the Democratic Alliance and the other opposition parties prepared some comments in limine and put the case very clearly before Parliament that what they were about to do was unlawful and illegal and that they could not substitute the public protector's findings with their own findings. These have all, all the founding arguments which were made by the opposition, as well as the arguments placed very firmly before Parliament during the debate on the uh, ad hoc committee report, um, were, have been vindicated completely by the judgment in the Constitutional Court yesterday. So these wounds that have been inflicted on the body politic and on the Parliament of the Republic of South Africa are self-inflicted wounds um, inflicted on Parliament by those custodians of Parliament who should be safeguarding its special place in our constitutional democracy. To this end, the Democratic Alliance contends that the Speaker of the National Assembly, Beleka Mbete, was derelict in her custodial duty to uphold the Constitution and protect and defend Parliament's constitutional obligations. This is not new, and time and time again, whenever there has been a requirement for this to be tested, the Speaker has allowed her position as the National Chairperson of the African National Congress and her proximity to President Zuma and her political ambitions to compromise the unbiased execution of her constitutional mandate in Parliament. It is ironic that the very person who should, after reading this judgment, be taking a good hard look at herself and her stewardship of the institution and looking how she can uh, restore some of the integrity is actually locked away in a huddle with the other members of the top six, not looking how they can protect Parliament, but looking how they can instead protect President Zuma. What cannot be debated is that the culture of corruption cannot be allowed to, to fester and continue. Parliament must do its job, but all of us as South Africans must be able to do that. I am supportive of any action that puts South Africans first, that says collectively, we must now come to a point where we recognize that our constitution survived a number of presidents. Now it's been violated by this current one who has managed to capture parliament for his own purpose. And it's not the first time it's happening, it's happening over and over again. Therefore, can we allow it to continue? Many people have said to me, is it up to the ANC? I say it's up to the people of this country. We will take all the actions we need to take in parliament, but now the people of this country, we need to come together and be able to vote for change. And so, because that's an instrument that democracy empowers you with, and I think it's unanimous across the board, from the clergy to South Africans to us, that it's time for Jacob Zuma to go.